Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. Today we're going to be checking out a method that we can use to uh, stitch together two different functions and make them both continuous and differentiable even when we have some piecewise defined function. So in this case we're looking at two different functions. Um, we can call them f1 of x and f2 of x or maybe g of x and h of x, you know, however we want to do it. And one of the functions is defined up to a certain point, which in this case is x equals negative 1. And the other one is defi defined up to the other point, in this case uh, x equals 1. And we want to find a smooth function that can uh, connect to both these functions. And sort of, as you can see, um, the value is consistent at x equals negative 1 and x equals 1. And also you can see that the curve kind of smoothly connects um, showing that they both have the same first derivative at these two points. So let's uh, figure out how we can do this. Um, in this video, we're just going to look at how to connect uh, functions from negative 1 to 1, because that's um, a lot easier than connecting them at other places. But the strategies that we use in this video can definitely be expanded to connect any two functions or even multiple functions at any point in the graph. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So in this case, these are the two functions. This is our f1 of x, which is defined for x greater than 1. So over here we have f1, and f2 of x is defined for x less than negative 1. And as you can see, we have our uh, other function of x, which is able to cleanly uh, connect here. And we're going to go over how we can actually find this uh, middle function, this blue function. So uh, for this video, we're going to assume that we have some function g of x which is defined for x is less than or equal to negative 1. And we have another function, h of x, which is defined for x is greater than or equal to 1. And so we want to find our function f of x, which is defined between x is uh, between negative 1 and 1. And so the way we're going to do this is we require our function to have four properties. First, we want f of 1 to equal h of 1. Next, we want f prime of 1 to equal h prime of 1. We want f of negative 1 to equal g of negative 1. And we want f prime of negative 1 to equal g prime of negative 1. And so essentially, since we have four conditions that we need to be satisfied here, we can choose a lot of different functions for f of x, as long as it has four different constants that we can play around with. Because then, with these four different constants, once we set up these four equations right here for f of 1, because remember, we can calculate h of 1 since we know what um, h of x is, right? We can calculate h prime of 1 and all of these values since we'll know what h of x and g of x are. So we have four equations right here. And so if we set f of x equal to some generalized formula, for example, for this video, we're going to be use, using the most simple function that works here, which is f of x equals c1 x cubed plus c2 x squared plus c3 x plus c4. That's probably the simplest thing that we can choose here. Another function that we could choose is something like f of x equals uh, c1 sine of c2 x plus c3 sine of c4 x, something like that. And that would definitely work as well. However, it's going to be much easier on our algebra since we'll just be able to do the algebra directly with, um, I'm sorry, I don't know why I put the cubed down here. We'll be able to do the algebra directly when we use power functions rather than more complicated functions like sine and cosine. So this is what we're going to set f1, f of x equal to. Now, something that I would like to note is that if we wanted to make our function a better fit, for example, if we wanted f double prime of 1 to equal h double prime of 1, and f double prime of negative 1 to equal g double prime of negative 1, that would make f of x even smoother and connect much more smoothly with uh, h of x and g of x. And so we can actually do that. All we have to do is add two more um, constants into our equation. So we would end up with f of x equals c1 x to the fifth plus c2 x to the fourth, all the way down to c6 as just a constant standalone. So every time we want to add another layer of derivatives matching, we can just add two more powers of x. And that we will totally be able to do that. However, in this video, I want to keep it short. I'm just going to uh, 
set the first derivative of f equal to the first derivative of to the other function. So I'm not going to deal with the second derivative in this video. So if we go ahead and calculate f prime of x, this is going to be 3c1x squared plus 2c2x plus c3, and then no c4. So if we go ahead and plug in everything for our equation here, we're going to end up with a pretty simple system of equations. So f of 1 is just c1 plus c2 plus c3 plus c4. This needs to equal h of 1. Next, f prime of 1, or 3c1 plus 2c2 plus c3, needs to equal h prime of 1. Then f of negative 1, or negative c1 plus c2 minus c3 plus c4, needs to equal g of negative 1. And finally, f prime of negative 1, or 3c1 minus 2c2 plus c3, must equal g uh, prime of negative 1. So this is a pretty simple uh, system of equations. And if you had a computer program, you could pretty s easily set up a matrix to solve this system of equations. And then you would be able to uh, generalize this to higher orders and be able to create a very good match for uh, g of x and h of x. So you could definitely go on to higher powers and higher orders and pretty easily with a computer program be able to come up with a very smooth f of x that will connect to g of x and h of x. However, we're going to just go ahead and do this by hand. So clearly the first step here is to take equations 2 and 4, and we're going to uh, subtract equation 4 from equation 2. So we're going to get that 4 times c2 equals h prime of 1 minus g prime of negative 1. And so we can just write this as c2 equaling h prime of 1 minus g prime of 1, negative 1, all over 4. And that's our first constant. So we have already successfully solved for one of our constants. And using this information, we can pretty easily solve for the next constant. And to do this, we're going to add h of 1 to g of negative 1. And we're going to end up with 2c2 plus 2c4 equals h of 1 plus g of negative 1. Isolating c4, we'll get 2c4 equals h of 1 plus g of negative 1 over 2. Then we're going to get minus 2c2. Or no, this is not over 2. I'm sorry, I, I tried to do the next step already. Okay, and now if we divide everything by 2, we will get this. And remember that c2 is just this, so if we go ahead and plug that in, we will get minus h prime of 1 over 4 plus g prime of negative 1 over 4. So that's c4. Next, let's go ahead and solve for the other constants. So we'll just go ahead and create another system of equations here. So if we subtract h of 1 minus g of negative 1, we will get that 2c1 plus 2c3, just from canceling those other terms. And if we go ahead and add h prime of 1 plus g prime of negative 1, we will get uh, 6c1 plus 2c3. Now we're going to go ahead and subtract this equation, and then we'll end up adding these all together. So we'll end up with h prime of 1 plus g prime of negative 1 minus h of 1 plus g of negative 1. Now these two C3s will end up canceling, and so we'll just end up with 4C1. And this implies that C1 equals H prime of 1 plus G prime of negative 1 minus H of 1 plus 
g of negative 1 all over 4. All right, and using this top equation again, I'm going to go ahead and erase some of this extra work here. Using this top equation 1, uh, again, we can pretty easily solve for C3. C3 is going to equal h of 1 minus g of negative 1 over 2, uh, and then minus C1. I'm just going to leave it as that, and I will show you the full expanded form in a moment. So these are our answers right here. And uh, this was uh, very easy to do because we chose that our functions would start and stop at negative 1 and 1. And so what that means is that uh, our system of equations was actually really easy to solve. We could mostly just eliminate the variables, and it was uh, overall just a pretty simple process. So if we were to pick other numbers, we'd end up with a much more difficult system of equations to solve, and it's more, more likely that we would have to use a calculator. Or... So let's go ahead and look at the final answer. So this is our final answer. In this case, um, f1 of x was equal to h of x, and f2 of x was equal to g of x. So this was the one that was defined for x greater than or equal to 1, and this one was greater, less than or equal to negative 1. And as you can see, our f of x here is equal to c1 x cubed plus c2 x squared plus c3x plus c4. And so this is the equation for smooth function that can be used to connect two functions which are defined up to negative 1 and from 1 onwards. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's a little bit different from stuff that we've done in the past, but uh, this was just kind of a cool topic that I thought was interesting to mention. Uh, so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time. Bye!